Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm so excited to have you here. We are going to dive right in. I'm actually really excited about the combination of cards I was intuitively guided towards today. So um, I really am anxious to dive in. But before we do, I just want to say thank you to all of you who regularly watch my videos, who support me by commenting, liking, sharing, subscribing. Um, I really do appreciate your support. It really does help. It really does matter. Um, so thank you very much. To those of you who are new to my channel, um, I would like to welcome you. And to all of you, I would like to remind you that these are general readings. And so take what resonates and leave the rest. Now let's dive in with this very interesting grouping of cards. For Pisces, please, Spirit, please show me the messages that Pisces needs to know right now. What does Pisces need to know right now? For Pisces. For Pisces. Okay. 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 Pisces, you know, you keep getting this kind of energy in your readings, right? You have island solitude, you have tree grounding, and you have rainbow blessings. There's this energy of, I feel like you are getting ready to emerge out of a period of maybe solitude or soul growth or maybe even a really challenging time where maybe you even felt very much like you were facing it on your own or like you had no one to rely on. This energy of island is just, it's telling me, I don't know if you guys can really see it. Let me try holding it up to the camera. Can you see that this tree is like this beautiful flowering purple tree? And this is the message that keeps coming out for you guys. It is that, you know, this period that you spent by yourself, it's like it wasn't for nothing. And it, and it wasn't, even if it felt like nothing was really changing or nothing was really evolving or nothing was really growing, you were. <laughs> you were evolving. You were changing. And as within, so without. So when you spend this time by yourself evolving and growing, even when it can be discouraging, even when you can look around and be like, nothing is changing. I'm doing all of this work and all of this heavy lifting and nothing is changing. Fear not. A lot of times, you know, if you're surrounded by darkness, you are the light, you know, and that's the energy I'm getting here. It's kind of like if you're emerged in a, in a, um, a space that feels like nothing is really changing, know that you are the change that is precipitating or coming before the change that is coming in your world. Um, with this tree and the grounding and see it's like this purple tree is like blooming and this is kind of saying you know uh, even you see how this reflection is not accurate of what is at the top it's all very dark you can't see that it's actually a blossoming tree here in the reflection there's this energy of you know not seeing it yet you know not seeing the bounty of your change not seeing the bounty of your growth maybe you're beginning to see it because i see all these flowers and bloom around this situation um and i feel like you are this great white egret here standing but um you just hang in there pisces because you're about it, it's going to be revealed you have a lot of blessings coming in um that are going to be a reflection of this time this period that you have spent investing in yourself, growing yourself, loving yourself, giving yourself the, the nourishment that you needed, okay? Um, tending to yourself. And, you know, with this grounding energy, it's important to really get grounded and centered before change. This is really giving me the energy of air here. And so it feels like a lot of things changing very quickly. Um, that's what air does for us, right? And... Um, you know, it's like one minute we're in the storm and the next moment the rainbow is revealed. And that is what I feel here. And so it is really important to ground in your own energy and to center and to really get firm in who you are, where you're going, what you want, what you're about, what your priorities are. Um, so that when these opportunities and these blessings come at you, you're not, you don't get swept away in the ethers of it all or the air of it all. And you can maximize it. You can use this energy to your will to, to bring to you what you are looking for, what you would like. 
All right, so let's dive in. I wanted to get a major arcana for this period of time for you, Pisces. For Pisces, please, Spirit. For Pisces, what energy does Pisces... Here we go. High Priestess. Yes, indeed, Pisces. Yeah, you have the Hierophant and the High Priestess. The High Priest and the High Priestess. Um... You're conjuring up and creating and intuitively allowing yourself to be guided toward what you are trying to manifest in your life here. You are using your own special Piscean-ness. <laughs> okay, I know that's definitely not a word. Piscean-ness. Um, to create what it is you want. And you are, I just feel like, the fertile ground from which it is all springing. Okay? So on this card, it says, Intuition, mystery, and sensuality combined with common sense. Now is the time to trust your instincts and go with your gut feeling. And then you have the Hierophant. Now is the time to confront to conform to convention or tradition. It's not a time to rock the boat. Okay, I feel here, I get this like stealthy ninja warrior kind of energy of like, um, it's almost like appearance is one thing, but what's really happening is another thing. It may even be where You may not be calling a lot of attention to the change that has happened within you. It may even be something where it's like you're even letting people believe or a particular person or group believe that you are the same or you're you're accepting the same thing or that you're, how do I want to say it? It's like, I feel like unbothered or something or un, unmoved. Un, it's like... You're working on something here, Pisces. You're working on something and you're not letting people know that you're working on it. That's what I feel. From the outside, it may even look like status quo. You may be creating some, you may be creating, I don't know. There is some kind of commitment here with the Hierophant. Pisces, these cards are very much like yesterday's energy. You have music on the bottom of the deck. This may be something that lets you know who this is. They may be a musician. This may be someone that you regularly think about when you're listening to music. This may be, um, music may be a sign of synchronicity, like, um, I don't know why this is what it's calling up for me. So just take it as it resonates. I was really super close to my cousin and she passed away. And I was grocery shopping in the same grocery store that we used to grocery shop together in when we were kids growing up, whenever I would go visit her. And I hadn't been there in like 10 years. And I walked in and they literally played what I would call our song was. It was like our anthem. Like every time we were together, we would turn this all the way up and dance through the house. Um, and that's what is being called up. And I haven't thought about that in years. Um, but I literally couldn't believe it. I mean, that that's definitely a sign or a synchronicity. I, that's what is being called to me with this music energy. It's like, you may hear a song, 
you may hear a song and hear something in the song that you never heard before. Like it may be a song that even you know the lyrics to, but you've never thought about the lyrics and all of a sudden the lyrics are taking on a new meaning. It may be that there's a song that is your song with this person and it's like all of a sudden, you know, in spaces where you wouldn't expect to hear it or, you know, maybe it's even like me, like going to a space that is some place that you shared with this person and all of a sudden they're playing the song and it, oh, like for me, it seemed kind of out of place. It was a Gin Blossoms song. If you know the Gin Blossoms, Hey Jealousy. And it, they were playing it in a grocery store and I was like, wait, what? Like I had not heard that in a grocery store and especially in like a rural, small, divey grocery store. I was just like, wait, what? Um, so anyway, yeah, it just, it was, I, I mean, I got goosebumps when it played. Um, so I don't know, that could be happening to you. Music could be coming to you in signs or synchronicities here in the near future, which could really serve as a confirmation for you. I feel the energy of a lot of confirmation, like, um, I almost get this sense of like, you're intentionally conjuring something up or you're intentionally trying to make something happen here. Um, but then there's like this energy of like, nah, and then there's this energy of, okay, these signs and synchronicities are undeniable. And it may be, you know, signs and synchronicities tell us a lot of things. Sometimes they tell us that we're close to achieving our goal. And sometimes they tell us, hey, trust the universe. Whatever is happening or not happening is in your highest and best good. So just be mindful of that. But with the energy in these particular cards in this reading today, you're getting, I'm lost without you. I'm sorry, chemistry, reach out and soul level. I feel like you have someone who you had some kind of connection with. This could be even like a friend. This could be, um, although with chemistry here, I almost feel, oh my gosh, you guys, seriously. Um, okay, take this as it resonates, but Someone I feel like is trying to turn someone on, maybe even through a post, maybe through even like some kind of message or there's something here where someone is trying to start a fire or start a spark or get some kind of opportunity here going. Um, And I feel like it works. I'm not encouraging this. Again, resonates means that your intuition knows it before I'm saying it. I think if you do it intentionally because I'm saying it, it's probably not gonna work, right? But I think if this was already something that you were planning or something that you were going to do, it's sort of like, you know that somebody really likes the way you look or you know that there is a physical sense in this relationship and there's something here where it's like, okay, you guys, I don't know what this is, but I see like taking a picture of a, of like a place even, or possibly yourself or something. And it's like, either I'm posting it, it it's like, but it is like a, it will make a particular person or it could make someone have some kind of reaction. I don't know. Take it as it resonates. I don't want to go too deep into it because I don't. I, I'm not encouraging you to do it, like I said, if it wasn't already something that you were doing or like intuitively you already felt that way. Um, there's some kind of soul level bond here and I do feel like someone does feel like, you know, um, with this I'm lost without you card, it's, it's sort of, I feel like you're the only person I feel really alive with. You're the only person that I can open up even a little bit to. Um, 
And like the I'm sorry, it's like I feel this person did something to really upset that or to really like not value that or to dishonor that. With the I'm sorry having a wedding ring in it, they may not have been able to show up for some kind of commitment or they may have... Um, Okay. I just wanted to go ahead and clarify these cards. Um, so you have, I'm lost without you one date. This person, I feel like they're trying to figure out if they can get you. It, Cause I feel as though someone did something um, to mess up this opportunity that they had with you. I feel like there was some kind of investment that was needed to continue on and this person was triggered. I feel like they bolted. Um, and I feel like what it really boils down to is that this person does not feel worthy of the opportunity or didn't feel worthy of the opportunity. Um, with soul level being clarified by inner work, I feel like part of the soul contract that was involved here was for soul growth in this life, um, especially for this person. Maybe also for you, but... Um, like that was one of the big purposes. I feel like there's this thing where, you know, the breakup or the falling apart of this connection was sort of necessary for this person to somewhat, I'm seeing the emperor card here, like step up and take control of their life, realize their own worthiness, um, instead of just trying to protect it and fool people that they thought they were worthy, but but then their actions really betray them and it makes it very obvious that they don't. Um, and so it's like this, the, the, the breakup was an opportunity for this person to really look at themselves. And, you know, I feel like the breakup may have happened because it, with the grass is greener, I, I'm getting the same energy I got yesterday, which is just that like, there was a competing thing and it may have been a competing relationship. It may have been a competing, you know, like family situation, friend situation, work situation, anything like that. And this person chose that over this connection. And I feel like they chose that because that is within their control. That's something that's not going to reject them. That's something where they know exactly where they fit in and they, um, they feel safer or more established in it. It feels less risky to them. And, um, but I feel that there is something here where, and I think this is why I feel so particular about saying to you guys, like it's something about a post or sending a picture or something like that. Because it's like, if this person isn't ready and you prematurely call someone back to you, then, you know, every time you come together and break apart, it actually, you know, creates another burden that you have to move beyond. And so you don't want to conjure up someone coming back into your life before they're ready. And, um, you, you know, it's better to sort of, I don't know, this is just the message that I'm getting. You just take it as it resonates, right? Listen to your own intuition. Your intuition is guiding you correctly for your situation. Um, but it's kind of like, I 
with this reach out and worthiness, there is just something about, you know, when someone is ready, it's sort of like they all reach out. I don't know. Uh, but I do feel like if this is you, this person, it's like it's going to remind them of the, it's like going to have that effect of like, wow, I, I still really want that. And I don't, I know my opportunity is fleeting and I do feel so much better now, or I do recognize that I do deserve to be that happy, or I do, you know, uh, like I, I can choose that over this. And it may be that you will get like a sign or a synchronicity that's telling you when, when to do this or the timing of the thing. I'm not sure. I am getting a strong thing on timing though. All right, let's dive in the tarot and see what happens. All right, for Pisces, please spirit. I never like to give out advice, right? I don't know more about your life or your situation than you do. I'm a fellow traveler. I'm a, I'm a spiritual being having a human experience just like you are. Um, and you always know what's best for your situation. And as a Pisces, you do have an intuition that you can really trust um, and that you can develop. <laughs> and so, you know, my readings should just confirm for you things that you already know. And if they're telling you something you don't know, then that might not be for you, right? So definitely give yourself that space. This is definitely a soulmate relationship. See, you guys? Oh, geez. This is making my stomach get butterflies. This is making me feel very weird right here, right now. Okay, so we have the Page of Wands with the Eight of Swords and the Hangman with the Lovers on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with another Pisces. You could be dealing with a Gemini. You could be dealing with someone with those signs in their chart. Obviously, you are a Pisces, probably, if you're watching this. Um, you may have strong Gemini in your chart. I, I keep feeling the energy of confirmation. Some of you may actually see a rainbow. Um, I don't know what this is, but some of you may even see music notes i don't know but there's something about music a song a particular song um it can be that angels are at play here like trying to bring something back together or trying to bring something together what i'm getting with the eight of swords and the hangman is pretty obvious right like the eight of swords is where we are stuck in a mental loop like we're we are only thinking so these things that are they, it's a limited belief system there is a butterfly in this card, which is telling me there's some kind of transformation around this. And especially when it's also coming out with the hangman, it's saying it could be a limited belief system or someone's, you know, thoughts that kept them, you know, stuck or unable maybe to commit or to step up to something in the past. Um, you know, it could be that, that someone, you know, um, again, it's like if, if you have a fear of abandonment or you have a fear of intimacy or you a lot fear really comes from our thoughts and really identifying with our thoughts. It's our ego, right? And our ego is the loudest voice in the room and our ego is a lot our thinking. And um, so, you know, a lot of times our ego will say, well, it's like if you choose Pisces, then it may cost you this group. Or what if you go for Pisces and, you know, um, and especially if, if the group or the other situation doesn't approve or if you're gonna have to sacrifice like your job to move somewhere, to be with someone, or, you know, I don't know what, what all your situations can be. And it's a general reading, it could be anything, right? So um, it could be another person, it could be whatever. Um, the situation, or it can't even be a limited belief system of like, I'm not worthy of Pisces love. Pisces, if they really knew who I was, wouldn't actually want me, wouldn't actually love me. You know, it's only as long as I can keep up some kind of charade about who I am. And you know, the, the more Pisces gets to know me, the more they're going to realize that I'm not who they think I am, or I'm not capable of the things that they think I'm capable of. You know what I'm saying? Um, it can be anything. It's a limiting belief system. It's something that keeps someone from being able to expand into an energy of growth. You know, but the butterfly, it doesn't, can't be held down by swords. You know what I mean? The butterfly is free to fly away from this. 
So someone may be finding freedom, but with the hangman, this is like, okay, I look back on the past, I get a new perspective, I get enlightened, I see how these thoughts are the things that were penning me in and that they're just thoughts and that it was self-entrapment and that I have the power and the capacity to free myself from it. And even with the hangman, you know, and the hangman usually has got his, his legs tied up, you know, he's hanging upside down and I get this sensation of like being pulled out of the center of the swords. The swords may all stay there, but I feel the energy of someone being liberated from um, a limited way of thinking. With a page of wands, this is like where we choose our desire. You know, this is where we say, okay, you know what, I am choosing what I want um, and I'm committing to this path and I'm going on it. You know, I may be brand new, I may not know what I'm getting into here, but I'm open for this journey. With the lovers, this is also talking about a choice, right? And this is talking about a soulmate. Um, so let's go ahead and clarify these. Oddly, I will say this splits bill gave me the feeling of the Eight of Swords when it came out. So it's just really interesting. It does feel like a, a mindset was the reason here. Could have been words, could have been opinions, could have been outside people talking and saying, if you do this, we'll disown you or, you know. Um, wow. Wow, wow, and wow. This is wild. So you have the Page of Wands being clarified by the Four of Cups. This is someone who, the reason they are coming out of this energy is because, and I feel like the Four of Cups came out yesterday, um, it's an energy of, you know, being born in discontent with your own life. It's like, you know, okay, and, and me staying in this limited belief system is going to keep me in this energy where nothing is really wonderful. You know, everything is okay. Everything may be reliable. Everything may be whatever. I know what's expected of me. I know, you know, where I fit in, you know, in that way, it may feel somewhat safe, but is safe what I really want in life? You know, do I want to stay within these boundaries and never go outside it, never explore, never see anything else or experience anything else? That may be why I'm getting this energy of like being pulled up and out. It's like this person sort of wants to see it or try it or, you know, know what's out there without really disturbing what is already there. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Um, and then you have with the hangman and the eight of swords, the three of wands, this person is really thinking about their future. And they're like, what do I want my future to look like? And this is like, okay, you know, um, with the hangman and the eight of swords, it's like, there is this energy of my life will stay the same or my life. This is what I can expect from my life. This is what I will only ever know. Um, you know, and with the three of wands, you know, this is like a far off thing. I mean, with the three of wands, I don't know why you guys, I'm getting a placement kind of energy here. So you could be at a distance from your person, or this could be someone saying, you know, I would have to leave where I am or put it behind me or expect to not return. I would, it's like, I would have to turn my back on where I am and I would have to look forward to where I want to go. And that would have to be so appealing to me or so something that I couldn't not choose that I would have to go. I would have to go on this adventure. But I do feel the sense that, you know, with the King of Cups, this is someone who is trying to master their emotions. You know, if this is someone, let's say this is a family situation where the family is saying to the person, we don't approve of Pisces. And so, you know, we don't want you to be in a relationship with Pisces. Um, and this may at first have really scared this person and caused this person to really act abruptly and almost maybe even sort of recklessly or unpredictably. They may have like really ghosted in like one second of time. Um, you know, because they, they, they're, they were susceptible to emotional manipulation, sort of, is sort of the energy I'm getting. This can also be like, okay, you know what, if someone grew up in, in poverty or grew up in um, an unstable place and they have a really stable job, but they would have to, you know, like, let's say, leave their job, leave where they are and travel to be in a relationship. And they may have let this stop them before, but they're still being beckoned to look at it, being beckoned to consider it 
with the King of Cups, it's like this is someone who is able to put aside the emotionality of, okay, what if I were to lose everything again? What if I were to have to start over? What if I were, you know, experiencing that instability that I experienced as a child that I promised myself I would never experience again when it was in my control to do different? Um, but they're saying, okay, you know what? If, you know, fear will keep us stuck. Fear will keep us living a small life. And, you know, this person is saying, you know, I'm not going to let the emotion of fear or the emotional control of stability and feeling comfortable or feeling like I know where I fit in in this situation and what I can expect from the situation to keep me from at least even, you know, looking toward the future and imagining what it could be like and asking myself, okay, is that worth it? Is that worth the risk? Um, you know, with this King of Cups, it's kind of like being able to keep the emotion out, out of it in a way of like being triggered into this limiting belief system or being triggered by this limiting belief system. Like it, it's letting this person see something or look at something that they weren't willing to really look at before. Especially when it came to a major choice, a major life choice. Mm. Wow. The Chariot and the Eight of Cups on this Three of Wands, after I was just saying, like, this person may have to really leave something behind and travel. <laughs> That's literally what those two cards say. And when the World card came out, this can be, like, around the world or, like, at a great distance or even, like, different countries. And I'm getting, it may be like the chariot is like to a masculine and a feminine energy. It doesn't have to be man and woman. It's a masculine and a feminine energy that are yoked up together. And it's like they may have to unyoke from someone in order to be able to yoke up with someone else. And with the world card and the eight of cups, it may be that something is coming to its natural conclusion or you know, this cycle has played out. This person may have already learned everything that they can learn from being in this cycle. And it may be time for them to, like they may have, it's, it's like, I feel this as two separate energies. It's like one thing has ended on its own organically. And, and there is this energy of like literally unbinding, unyoking, um, separating the energies. Um, to be able to join up our energy with someone else. With the five of wands, there, I mean, the five of cups, um, you know, there's this energy of, see how he has this rag in his hand and these are like spilled cups and then he has two it makes me feel like he's cleaning each cup and standing it upright it's, it feels to me like I, I have some past business that i have to complete or take care of let's see the world card for Pisces. The fool. Yeah, I have to. I'm something is ending so that someone can come forward for something else. Oh wow. Someone is making a decision that they have. Wow. Okay, so you have the two of pentacles here, and this is always that choice between love and fear, but it's someone who's really wishy-washy because it's like 
you know, they may be like, yeah, I love you or yeah, I want this opportunity, but equally pulling them backward is, you know, the fear is the fear of leaving behind someplace where they are very comfortable or where they know what to expect or, you know, and it does feel like they have to choose between two worlds or two things. Like they can't have them both at the same time. And it's like, sometimes the person is absolutely sure they want one thing and sometimes they're absolutely sure they want the other thing. But typically when you see this card upright, for me it is that they keep choosing fear. And you know what I mean? And so they're, and especially when we see the Eight of Swords and we see, you know, like these, these cards. Also, you do have the Eight of Swords and the Eight of Cups so far in your reading. So two eights. Um, but with justice, it's, I'm making this decision once and for all. And justice, the beautiful thing about justice is it's not emotionally driven. You know, it, it's driven by by fairness, equity, and the sword, you know, um, the quote unquote truth, right? And um, her feet are always firmly on the ground, right? And this is like, they're, they're grounded, they're centered, they're making a decision that's in alignment with the highest and best of all. And um, so that is definitely not fear, right? And with the two of pentacles and justice, this is like saying to me, I am finally stepping up to make the firm and solid choice that I'm not going to go back and forth on. You know, I, I'm even making maybe the decision to not go back and forth. Whatever this decision is that I'm making, whatever I'm choosing, I'm standing by it. I'm not faltering again. And, you know, with that full card on the world card, the world is the last card in the major arcana and the full card is the first card. So this is someone that's definitely ready for a new beginning and they are really leaving the past behind. You know, the full can only carry what fits in the knapsack. They can't bring their entire past with them and all of the burdens and all of the this and all of the that, you know, with the page of cups. Um, but most importantly, what I'm actually getting from this is the Eight of Swords is no longer keeping this person trapped. Um, with the Page of Cups on the bottom of the deck, this is someone that may feel they owe you an apology or at least really owe you the truth of some nature from their heart space. Like they may have held something back. They may not have offered you emotion before. Or they may not have ever said they were sorry for the things that they've done. Um, they may not have ever really given you a solid explanation like... They could have ghosted you. They could have, you know, not really said like, look, I just, I feel like this or like that. Like I can't choose this over that or I can't, you know, like my hands are tied or whatever. You know, with the eight of swords, a lot of times people feel like they don't, they can't see any other way. They can't see beyond the swords. They, they can only see the option of staying within those swords. And so, you know, they may not have really explained that to you um, or they may have with the hangman energy, you know, and the three of wands really realized that like they were looking very short sighted and they were looking at the like now, not the long term and their long term happiness. And, you know, like this is like if someone's choosing their parents over the great love of their life, right, um, their parents are going to die. You know what I mean? And and like, you know, Cahill Gabron has I, I love Cahill Gabron and I, I know that, you know, you know that, but he has this um one on children, on parenting and children. And he's talking about how you are, as a parent, the archer. You, you know, you you cannot know what your children are going to face because they're in a different time than you were. You know what I mean? And you cannot control it. And it, it isn't for you to determine really where the arrow goes or, you know, they're not beholden to you. The whole purpose and the whole point is to be the best archer to, you know, give your child the best chance to go where they wish and to do what they want to do and to just be the steady platform from which they launch, you know, but not to be their whole life and the dictator of where they go and what they do and da 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 da. Um, and so I don't know why that's coming up, but, um, you know, this person may have realized that they were loyal to the wrong entity or that, you know, they had been loyal to something their entire life, or um, they had been, they were loyal to this before, they were loyal to you, and so, you know, they picked that or whatever, but it, it feels like there is some explanation of the heart that was not given 
that may need to be given or need to be spoken or some message that needs to be delivered that's actually very real and very authentic. Um, Wow, okay, so the lovers is coming out in reverse here. Wow, with the full card coming up right with the sun. This person feels that they made a decision based on the wrong set of facts or the wrong, you know, with the hangman, it, it is like the, their perspective is now showing them how in reverse the decision that they made before was. Um, and with the full card, it's like, this is them saying, you know what, I'm freeing myself for this journey. With the sun card, it's like I am choosing my happiness. This is the journey of my own happiness. This is me prioritizing me and what I need and what I want. And like I said, you know how the world came out separate from the, um, what was it? The eight of cups and um, was it the chariot? Yeah. Um, how do I want to say? It's like one thing is ending so that another thing can begin how is it it's like um <sighs> maybe even it's like i needed to see the result of that choice or that decision in order to know that that was a bad decision in order to be able to see in order to to feel the things that i felt that caused me to choose this hangman energy to like really review what i had made and to see how upside down the choice was that I made and how I was prioritizing possibly the wrong things or maybe like not myself, not my own happiness, not my own desire um, kind of energy. And now that I have seen it, that is what I actually needed to free myself from the energy that I was in in the past. With the sun card, some of you may be dealing with a Leo with the full card. Some of you may be dealing with an Aries or an Aquarius with the lovers again, um, possibly Gemini. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, you guys. So the lovers in reverse is being clarified by the three of pentacles in reverse. This may be someone who could have really seen a vision, could have really seen a plan, may have even been participating in it and then suddenly took their energy back and didn't collaborate. They may have made a choice to like not pursue this. Um, and yet it, they're seeing how goofy that was because this could have been their future. This could have been something that could have been very strong and could have really withstood the test of time. You know, the three of pentacles is like my energy for, we're choosing to build something that can withstand a tower because the three of pentacles upright is like, we're sharing a vision, we're sharing a plan and we're doing the work together to build it. And that is the core basis for any good relationship. And it really is a card of true friendship, which is the basis of every good relationship. Um, and so, um, you know, cause life takes you through so many things. I, I literally was just talking to my daughter. Um, my mother-in-law passed away, you know? And so we went back to my husband's hometown and saw his friends and my, my kids were like being told all these stories about my husband when he was younger. Um, cause he's had the same friends since he was like five. He's like that type of person. And, um, <laughs> and um, we were just talking about it and then I started telling my kids stories about how, what, like our life was like when we were first dating and when we first like lived together, when we were first married and all that stuff. And it was kind of funny, but you know, at the basis of it all, like I was telling my kids, like some of his friends had really fancy apartments and at that time it was like they had a washer and dryer in them and my husband and I were like ghetto broke and so we did not. And, um, we, but, but we, we used to laugh because we had so much fun at the laundromat. We took our, we loaded up our clothes and took them to a laundromat that had a Pac-Man table in it. And we would like brutally crush each other in Pac-Man. And, and like, we have so many memories of it. We would take all of our quarters and go and we would have the best time. And I remember one day, you know, my husband was like, okay, they're all spending twice as much on their apartment. And yeah, they have a washer and dryer in their apartment and they don't have to go through the trouble of like spending an entire day doing laundry or like half a day doing laundry. But we have so much fun doing it and we have so much fun like going out to eat every once in a while and doing these things that they can't afford because they're paying for an apartment with a washer and dryer in it. And so, you know, but that's how my husband and I are and we are still like that to this day. We, we still like 
have so much fun even doing like the most mundane things, you know? And, um, and, it, and it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, it's, but that's the three of pentacles. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, we're sharing this, like we're making this decision to spend half as much on rent because literally that's what it was back then. Um, to not have a washer and dryer in our place and to have to take our clothes. But like also we're choosing to go to a place where we have an amazing time um, challenging each other to Miss Pac-Man and Pac-Man. So anyway, I don't know. Um, but that lasts forever through all the changing tides, through having kids, through kids leaving, through empty nests. It's like if you have that friendship, um, you, you always come back to it. You, that is always the basis of everything. Um, and so with the full card and the nine of pentacles here, there is this energy of somebody saying like, I am freeing myself because I realize the value of this person. Look what they have been able to cultivate in their own life. Look at who they are. You know, each one of these pentacles is a heart earned quality characteristic. Um, you know, um, thing of value. And, you know, when someone, you have to work very hard to be in the energy of the Nine of Pentacles. You have to, um, you have to invest in yourself and you have to be someone who, you know, is really focused on their own stability and their own strength. And, you know, isn't buoyed about by the rising and changing tides of life, you know, the, the ebb and flow of life, you know, you are stably making moves to build something of value for yourself and investing in yourself um, to, to know that you will be solid and stable with or without someone else. Um, and with the hangman on the bottom of the deck, it's like in retrospect, I'm really seeing what I had an opportunity for. We had this stability. We had this deep friendship. We were able to share a vision and a plan. And I trust this person to have worked together with me. And that is a rare thing to find. And that is, like I said, the thing that withstands all the towers and all the changing tides of life, all the natural, you know, um, changing circumstances that we face as, you know, we move through the different phases of life. And with the fool and the nine of pentacles, it's like, you know, you're kind of a fool if you have that kind of opportunity and you dismiss it um, based on some limited belief system or based on, you know, if someone doesn't want you to have that in your life, is that love? Is it? Because the love that I know, the love that I believe in is unconditional, you know, is I will love you regardless. You know, that's why love itself is such a freeing thing. It's not a ball and chain. It's not trying to sink you or hold you down or keep you trapped. It's something that is setting you free. Hey, go be and do who you are. Figure it out. Continue to learn. Continue to grow. I'm going to be right by your side enjoying the spectacle that is you and your life and, and you becoming um, because I love you, you know. Um, so with the hangman, it's kind of like seeing someone that would not want you to have that in your life will... What does that really mean? You know, if it's a friend group, are they really like jealous because they don't have it in their life and they don't want you to have it? Um, and then if so, are those really, is that really your friend group? You know, if this is your family, okay, is that family really supportive? Is, are they really acting out of love? Or are they actually acting out of jealousy or envy or they don't want you to do better than them what they did or they're actually afraid that you're going to abandon them and then they'll be old and alone? You know, who knows, right? But... Um, where is your responsibility? Is it to them or is it to yourself and your own happiness here? Um, and so with the full card, it's like, once you see that very clearly, you're free to pursue your happiness. And if they love you, then, then, then it was love, you know? And if they don't, then it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know, but that's how cut and dry it feels to me. Okay. Let me go one more. Wow. You have the Ten of Wands with the Six of Wands with the Four of Coins on the bottom of the deck. And with the Ten of Wands, you know, this is the completion of a burdensome cycle. And, you know, sometimes, you know, with parents, with jobs, with, 
you know, maybe even commitments to relationships that we've outgrown, whether it's friendship, whether it's a third party, whether, you know, whatever it is, it's like, okay, you know what? I don't owe this thing anymore. You know, I can close out this burdensome cycle. I can, um, release myself from this feeling of duty or obligation to carry the weight of this. And with the Six of Wands, this is like, okay, I am free to be successful. I'm free to pursue my own success and my own victory here. Um, after kind of a long battle, really. And it can be a battle with the self. Um, with the Four of Coins on the bottom of the deck, <clears throat> I kind of want to leave that until I clarify the four of coins um, can be so many things. And actually why what I'm seeing in this card is the like marital ring finger. Um, so I, I don't know. I just want to just pull my um, cards here. <coughs> okay. So you have all wands, <laughs> clarifying the six of wands and the 10 of wands. You have the two of wands, the eight of wands, and the nine of wands. So you have the eight, nine, and 10 of wands, and the two of wands and the six of wands. This is a lot of wands, a lot of fire energy here. Um, and we are actually in Leo season. We are in a season of fire. Um, could be that. Also, wow, you have three eights. Um, in your reading, but, uh, there is this energy of, um, whenever we're talking about wands, action and passion and acting out of desire and like going for what it is that we actually really want. And it, for this, for me, it almost feels like coming out of a hibernation or, you know, coming out of, um, out of, it's like, if I never would have known I could have just stayed here forever and been okay with it. But the moment I was introduced to this thing that I desire, I knew I would never be okay with it. I Or like, it's not that I would never be okay. I, it was a way harder burden to bear. It was a harder, it, 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 it made me understand how many burdens I was actually carrying by not going for my own success or victory, by compromising that or by putting myself in a situation of feeling that I owed something to someone to carry a burden. I don't know, take it as it resonates. So you have the 10 of wands carried, or carried, oh Lord, um, clarified by the two of wands, which is a decision. And in this particular two of wands card, he has already made the choice. Like he is already moving toward the future. And you see there's like flowers on this wand. I can't really be sure, but it feels like, you know, I'm not, I'm not leaving in a hateful way. Like I'm still honoring this or I'm still, I'm giving you the offer to not be offended by my choice or to, you know, take it from your highest and best or like, I don't know how to describe it, but it feels like a decision made of honor. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I'm not just blowing this situation up. It, it, it goes back to that world card, eight of cups being separate energy. Um, you know, I, like I'm saying goodbye or I'm letting this know before I'm moving on toward my future. I don't know. Um, but, but it's like, I have to do this for myself. I have to release myself. I have to choose to let this burdensome cycle close out with the six of wands being clarified by the eight of wands. This is, this is purely the energy of moving towards success and victory without obstacle. And this may be um, where communication is coming in or where there's communication exchanged back and forth. The Eight of Wands is communication. And you guys have so many other cards of communication, I feel like, that there could be some kind of message coming in. Someone could be leaving. I, I almost, it's like there's these two rings. And on the pinky finger, I don't know, this is giving me like signet ring, like, I don't know, you know, that could be like a college, could be like a person, could be something. And then the, the ring finger, the, I mean, the, 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 the wedding ring finger, finger. So this can be, you know, it's like, cause you also had that other card where it said, I'm sorry. And there was a wedding ring on it. Um, 
I don't know, take it as it resonates, but it's something that made this person hold themselves back. Um, you have the nine of wands. Um, this to me, and wow, with underneath that is the eight of cups. I, I tried to, oh my God, and underneath that, you guys, is the ace of cups. I, oh my God, and underneath that is the two of cups, okay? And underneath that is the five of cups. Okay, so definitely this is some someone who has made a decision to to choose a you know, I feel like this relationship or this opportunity um at their happiness or at something that is healthy or they feel is healthy or they feel is like in their best interest with the two of cups and the ace of cups. And you know, it may be that they tried to walk away, but they, they couldn't really let it go, that these feelings or this desire persisted. And, um, you know, so maybe they tried to walk away from this connection. Maybe they did walk away from this connection. You know, maybe they even tried to put as much distance as they could between the connection, or maybe there was always water or something between you and this connection. But the, the desire for what it was offering it remained. And this person, as much as they tried to get away from it, 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 they could not let it go. And so that is what is causing the progress here with the wands. You know, it's the actual desire of it. Eight, nine, ten of wands. Okay. Um, that's causing them to close out some cycle to make themselves available for this cycle. So, holy moly, Pisces. I don't know. I feel like this isn't every single person's message. Or maybe, like, it is, but it's, you know, in regards to, you know, work, you know, a friendship, a relationship, you know, take it as it resonates. You just, you know, allow yourself to be guided by your own intuition. I'm not trying to fill the world with, um, you know, false hope or, or anything like that or lead you astray. But I feel like there is, there's going to be confirmation. And like, this is your reading. I feel like there's going to be confirmation. Also underneath that, it does say, I love you. If you're dealing with a water sign, I can't get enough of you. I am waiting patiently. Does this situation align with your values and morals? I know you don't feel the same. I know that I crossed the line with you and I have trouble with intimacy. If you're dealing with a fire sign, I left you before you could leave me. Someone in this connection is gripped by obsessive thoughts. So many things remind me of you. It's safe to make the move you're considering and I admire you. Okay, if you're dealing with an earth sign, I want you so badly. Um, I'm starting to understand our connection. I find you so attractive. I wish we could go back. I'm not over you. I want to make amends. And if you're dealing with an air sign, Pisces, I don't know how to feel. Your intellect arouses me. I still feel the pain. I hide behind material things. Clear your energy field and focus on yourself before acting, and I love you. All right, Pisces, this is what I have for you. I really hope that it helps. I hope this brings you some peace and some clarity. If it does, let me know. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, I don't, okay. This is what I have for you. Okay, I'm still getting like, I'm I'm getting like numbers. Pay attention to signs and synchronicities. Just try to stay present in the moment and allow yourself to be guided. If the, the like, mm, I feel like you're being guided toward opportunities or things that are meant for you at this time. And it may have something to do with numbers. It may have something to do with music. It may have something to do with both. Um, just, um, yeah. All right, Pisces, this is what I have for you. I really hope it helps. Until next time, I send you off with all my very best. Always, always, always. Oh, also, if you're a member of my membership channel, I want to let you know that I am planning on going live on Saturday, um, this Saturday. And I'm not sure of the time yet, but as soon as I figure it out, I just have to check a couple of things that I have going on that day. Um, I'm going to post it in the membership. So, um, if you're interested in becoming a member, there's always a link in the description box. You have to copy and paste it and put it in your browser in order to get there, I believe. Um, but yeah, for those of you who are members, I am planning at, and I think I'm just going to have some cards and I might just do a few readings. 
Um, we'll just see how it goes, okay? Uh, so I, I, I'm gonna plan something. We'll see how, how it works out. All right, until then, you guys, or until next time, I send you off with all my very best. Always, always, bye-bye.